Aircraft carriers cost $13 billion. They carry 5,000 crew, and they're sitting ducks for modern missiles. China's DF-21D travels at hypersonic speeds, specifically to destroy them. Russia has the Mach 2.5 Onyx. One carrier loss would be the worst naval catastrophe since Pearl Harbor. The math is brutal. Lose one carrier, lose an entire theater of operations. But the U.S. Navy just solved the problem with something that changes warfare itself. A drone carrier that makes those carrier killer missiles worthless. Here's how. The U.S. Navy is building a warship that makes $13 billion aircraft carriers obsolete. Not an upgrade, not a modification, a completely different species of vessel designed to deploy drone swarms that can overwhelm any defense system on Earth. And China is terrified. For 80 years, the aircraft carrier has dominated naval warfare. These massive platforms project power through manned aircraft, carrying F-A-18 Super Hornets and F-35C Lightning IIs that cost over $100 million each. A single Nimitz or Ford-class carrier costs $13 billion to build. It requires a crew of over 5,000 sailors and aviators. It takes over five years to construct. And when it's operational, it becomes the center of an entire battle group. Cruisers, destroyers, submarines, all orbiting around this single high-value asset. But there's a growing problem. China has developed the DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile, specifically engineered to destroy American carriers. Dubbed the Carrier Killer, it has an estimated range of 1,500 kilometers and travels at hypersonic speeds in its terminal phase. Russia possesses the P-800 Onyx supersonic cruise missile, capable of striking naval targets at Mach 2.5. Iran has tested anti-ship ballistic missiles in the Strait of Hormuz. The math is brutal. Carrier defense systems can intercept some threats, but against saturated salvos of hypersonic and supersonic missiles, survival isn't guaranteed. And if you lose a carrier, you don't just lose $13 billion. You potentially lose 5,000 American lives. You lose power projection capability across an entire theater. You lose strategic credibility with allies and adversaries. A single carrier loss would be the greatest naval catastrophe since Pearl Harbor. The U.S. Navy knows this. Adversaries know this. And that's why, in classified Navy facilities, engineers are building something radically different. Not a bigger carrier. Not a more armored carrier. Something that completely redefines what it means to project naval power in the 21st century. Something that makes China's anti-carrier strategy obsolete before it's even fully implemented. The world's first dedicated drone carrier is in development. And it's going to change everything. This isn't a traditional aircraft carrier with drones added. This is a purpose-built drone warfare platform designed from the keel up. Every system, every deck, every operational protocol built around one mission. Deploy, command, and recover autonomous swarms at scale. The difference matters more than you think. Traditional carriers are built to launch and recover manned aircraft. That means massive flight decks for takeoff and landing, catapult systems that can accelerate a 30-ton fighter to 170 miles per hour in two seconds. Arresting gear to catch aircraft landing at 150 miles per hour. Enormous hangar bays to store and maintain 60 to 80 aircraft. Berthing spaces for 5,000 plus crew members. Fuel storage for jet aircraft. The entire design is constrained by human limitations. Pilots need runways. Maintenance crews need workspace. Everyone needs food and quarters. A dedicated drone carrier eliminates those constraints. Drones don't need 300-meter flight decks. They don't need catapults or arresting cables. Many can launch vertically or from shortened rails. They don't need pilots' ready rooms or berthing spaces. The crew requirement drops to under 1,000, just enough to maintain systems and command operations. That means smaller ship, lower construction cost, reduced operational expenses. Early estimates put drone carrier construction at $3 to $5 billion compared to $13 billion 
for Ford-class carriers. But here's where it gets interesting. That cost savings doesn't mean reduced capability. It means redistributed capability. Instead of 60 to 80 manned aircraft, a drone carrier can deploy 100-plus autonomous systems simultaneously. Not just aerial drones, surface drones, subsurface drones, a heterogeneous swarm operating across multiple domains. These systems can be pre-positioned hundreds of miles from the carrier itself, operating in coordinated patterns while the mothership stays outside enemy missile range. The tactical implications are staggering. Traditional carrier operations put the ship within 500 to 600 miles of targets, close enough for manned aircraft to strike and return. That puts carriers within range of modern anti-ship missiles. Drone carriers can operate 1,000-plus miles from contested areas while their autonomous systems do the fighting. The ship becomes a mobile command node, not a vulnerable strike platform. You're not risking a $13 billion asset and 5,000 lives. You're risking distributed $2 to $5 million drones with zero human casualties when they're destroyed. And adversaries are watching this development very, very carefully. Let's talk about the math that's keeping Chinese and Russian naval planners awake at night. Because this isn't just about technology. It's about the strategic calculus that has governed naval warfare for a century suddenly becoming irrelevant. Scenario 1. Traditional Carrier Warfare China launches a coordinated attack against a U.S. carrier battle group in the South China Sea. They fire a saturation salvo, maybe 50 DF, 21D ballistic missiles, 100 cruise missiles, coordinated with submarine-launched torpedoes. The carrier's Aegis defense systems engage. SM-3 and SM-6 missiles intercept some threats. Close-in weapon systems destroy others. But against hypersonic terminal velocities and sheer volume, some missiles get through. One hit on a carrier isn't catastrophic. These ships are built to survive damage. But three hits? Four? The carrier is mission killed? Or worse? The result? Thirteen billion dollars gone. Potentially five thousand casualties. An entire carrier air wing, 60 aircraft worth $6 billion, lost. American power projection in the Indo-Pacific crippled. Global implications for U.S. security guarantees to Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and the Philippines. That's not just a military loss. That's a geopolitical earthquake. Scenario 2. Drone Carrier Warfare. Same location, same adversary. But now the carrier is positioned 1,200 miles offshore, outside the missile engagement zone. It's drone swarm. 100 autonomous systems is operating in distributed formation across 50,000 square miles of ocean. China detects the swarm and launches attacks. They manage to destroy 20 drones through coordinated air defense and electronic warfare. The cost? 40 to 100 million dollars in lost systems, zero human casualties. The remaining 80 drones continue their mission, coordinating autonomously to adjust tactics and maintain operational tempo. The carrier launches replacement drones within hours. Mission continues. No national tragedy, no geopolitical crisis, just operational friction that's acceptable and sustainable. This is the oh-shit moment for traditional naval doctrine. You can't win against a drone carrier the way you win against a traditional carrier. There's no single point of failure, no concentration of value worth a massive missile expenditure. Destroying 20 drones doesn't degrade capability the way destroying a carrier does, and the economic exchange ratio favors the drone carrier overwhelmingly. China spends hundreds of millions in missiles to destroy tens of millions in drones. That's not sustainable warfare. That's bleeding yourself dry against an enemy who can replace losses faster than you can inflict them. Here's what makes drone carriers truly revolutionary. They don't just change the economics of naval warfare. They change the doctrine. The U.S. Navy calls it distributed lethality, spreading offensive capability across multiple low-cost platforms instead of concentrating it in a few high-value assets. 
and it fundamentally breaks the opponent's targeting problem. Traditional carrier battle groups are hierarchical. The carrier is the queen on the chessboard. Lose it, and you've lost the game. Everything else exists to protect that single asset. Destroyers provide air defense. Cruisers coordinate anti-missile systems. Submarines hunt enemy subs. The entire formation is designed around keeping that carrier alive because without it you have no strike capability. Adversaries know this. Their entire strategy is find the carrier, kill the carrier, win the battle. Drone carriers flip that equation. There's no single critical node. The carrier itself is just a logistics and command platform, valuable but not operationally essential in real time. The actual combat power resides in the swarm, and that swarm doesn't operate as a tight formation that can be targeted. It operates as a distributed network across hundreds of miles. Imagine 100 autonomous drones, 30 aerial reconnaissance platforms, 40 strike drones carrying anti-ship missiles, 20 surface drones acting as sensor nodes, 10 subsurface drones hunting submarines. They're not clustered together. They're spread across 50,000 square miles, communicating through mesh networks, coordinating targets autonomously using AI-driven tactical algorithms. Some drones are 200 miles north of the carrier. Others are 300 miles west. They're operating in independent cells that can coordinate for strikes or disperse to avoid threats. Now you're the Chinese fleet commander trying to defend against this. Where do you point your defenses? What do you prioritize? You can shoot down five drones in one sector, but that doesn't stop the 15 drones attacking from a different vector. You can jam communications in one area, but the swarm uses autonomous coordination. It doesn't need constant contact with the carrier. You destroy a third of the swarm, and the remaining systems adapt their tactics in real time and continue the mission. This is the nightmare scenario for traditional naval forces. You're not fighting a battle group with a predictable structure. You're fighting a distributed intelligence system that has no center of gravity. And traditional naval warfare, built around finding and destroying capital ships, doesn't have an answer for that. Not yet. Maybe not ever. The doctrine that won World War II just became obsolete. The Pentagon isn't discussing exact timelines publicly. But defense analysts estimate the first dedicated drone carrier could be operational within three to five years. That might sound like a comfortable lead. It's not. Because China and Russia are already racing to catch up, and the window of American advantage is closing faster than most people realize. China has been watching U.S. drone development very closely. In 2023, the People's Liberation Army Navy unveiled concepts for their own autonomous swarm-capable vessels. They're not calling them drone carriers. The terminology is intelligent, unmanned warfare platforms. But the function is identical. Launch, command, and recover autonomous systems at scale. Chinese military journals have published papers on counter-swarm tactics and distributed autonomous coordination. They know exactly what's coming, and they're not sitting idle. Russia announced in 2024 that they're developing swarm-capable surface vessels as part of their naval modernization program. Given Russia's economic constraints, their version will likely be smaller and less capable than U.S. systems. But they don't need parity. They just need enough capability to threaten U.S. naval operations and complicate targeting solutions. Even a rudimentary drone swarm forces American battle groups to divert resources and attention. And here's the critical point. Whoever masters autonomous swarm coordination first doesn't just gain an advantage. They gain dominance. Because traditional naval forces cannot effectively counter distributed autonomous attacks at scale. The sensors, the targeting systems, the defensive doctrines, all built for a different kind of warfare. A warfare where you knew where the enemy was, what their formation looked like, what their flagship was. Drone swarms eliminate all those assumptions. The U.S. currently has a technological lead in AI coordination, autonomous systems integration, and swarm behavior algorithms. 
That lead represents maybe a decade of research and billions in development costs. But leads can be eroded. Technology can be stolen. Concepts can be copied and refined. The Chinese don't need to invent this from scratch. They just need to reverse engineer the principles and apply their massive manufacturing base to production. The carrier era lasted 80 years. From World War II until now, the aircraft carrier was the dominant capital ship, the ultimate expression of naval power. That era is ending. Not someday, not eventually. Right now. The drone carrier era has begun. And the Navy that perfects this technology first will control the oceans for the next 50 years. The race is on, and there's no second-place prize in naval supremacy. So here's the question. Does the U.S. maintain its three- to five-year lead? Or does China close the gap faster than analysts predict? Drop your take in the comments. And if you want to see how other nations are responding to this threat, hit that subscribe button. The naval arms race is accelerating, and you don't want to miss what happens next.